video, we're going to be breaking down some common misconceptions about dog separation anxiety, and we're going to be breaking down some myths. So if you're interested, keep watching. What's up guys? It's Jenna with Dog Liaison, where I coach you on how to enhance your dog's mental health needs. On this channel, we break down scientific research in order to inform us on how to train dogs. So if you're interested in a nerdier approach to canine cognition, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. Now, I am a professional dog trainer who works solely with dogs with anxiety disorders, and in my signature program, the Recovering Rover program, I work with dogs dealing with separation anxiety every single day. And so that also means that I have heard some crazy ideas about what separation anxiety is and how it should be treated. But before I get into some of those misconceptions and break those down a little bit, I did want to let you know that I have a free separation anxiety frequently asked questions guide in the description box below is 100% free download. Do me a favor, go in the description box, hit that link and get your free frequently asked questions guide. The first misconception around dog separation anxiety is that if you just give your dog more exercise, if you just give them more entertainment, well then your dog will stop whining. So here's the deal. In this video, I talked about how the, the researchers have actually found four different types of separation related problems, and that is verifiable by science. So if you want more information on that, open that link in a new tab and watch that video after this one. And I break down those four different diagnoses. But one of those four that the researchers found is indeed boredom. And if your dog is experiencing boredom, then yes, obviously more quality enrichment is necessary for sure. However, boredom, in my opinion, is not the same as separation anxiety. Separation anxiety is rooted in panic. It is rooted in an internal distress. And so for more information on what anxiety is and the difference between anxiety and fear, you can watch this video um, after this one. It's a really good video. I hope I recommend you check that out. But anxiety is not boredom. Anxiety is an internal emotional discomfort that is very consuming. And just giving the dog more exercise, making the dog more tired, is not actually solving the internal anxiety that is happening. And in fact, often dogs that are experiencing anxiety, even if you give them all the exercise in the world, they'll still be awake and they'll still panic because those safety mechanisms in the brain are turned on and they're really just careless about how much, um, how many resources have already been used. The next misconception that I see all the time is that if you just give your dog a juicy Kong full of peanut butter or a really exclusive toy, then that'll solve your dog's separation anxiety. So here's the thing. This is another solution that could help a dog who is experiencing boredom potentially, but I haven't really seen it fix too much separation anxiety. It can fix mild separation anxiety, mild discomfort, uh, especially if the dog is um, you know, younger and just doesn't know how to handle being alone whatsoever, then perhaps giving him that really high value toy can be beneficial. However, if your dog is experiencing an anxiety attack when he is left alone, if he is experiencing serious separation anxiety, real separation anxiety, then you actually need to do a process called desensitization. So what I'm gonna do is in my very next video, I'm gonna be breaking down the difference between these two techniques. So the difference between uh, giving a dog a toy and giving a dog uh, the desensitization process. So if you're interested in learning those two different techniques and when they're applicable, hit that subscribe button. The next misconception around separation anxiety is that if you just let the dog whine it out, he will get over it. So this misconception is actually rooted, I think, in sort of the misunderstanding of what separation anxiety is and the difference between problem solving and in a panic attack. So here's the thing. There is some basis to having a dog problem solve their issue, right? If you have a young puppy who, you know, needs to sort of problem solve a little bit, I'm not saying it's the best solution. I'm not even saying do this. All I'm saying is you could, in theory, 
put the dog in the crate and then wait three minutes and see if they shut up. Again, I'm not saying do this. I'm not saying it's the best idea. I'm just saying it could work, okay? But here's the thing. You have no way of knowing whether or not that dog is in a logical state of mind to be able to handle that degree of problem solving. When a dog is experiencing a panic attack, when a dog is experiencing an anxiety disorder like separation anxiety, very little logical problem solving can occur because all of the resources are being sent to to keeping that uh, fight, flight, or freeze system engaged. It is being sent to the survival mode. So you have to think to yourself, is my dog really experiencing anxiety? And if he is, then putting him in the crate and letting him whine it out will not solve your problem. In fact, if you end up have, having a dog that decides to get quiet and lay down in the crate, even after an hour, three hours, five hours, whatever it is. Well, likely what's happening is learned helplessness. And learned helplessness is something that I talked about in this video, you can check it out after this. But learned helplessness is the idea that a dog gives up or that a dog is no longer able to uh, push further along or, or continue to work on their issue. They just sort of succumb. This might sound convenient, but what actually ends up happening is you get a dog very insecure. You get a dog who has zero confidence in his abilities, Has it's very hard on the dog's ego. And I do not recommend you ever put a dog in a situation where learned helplessness is his solution. So again, if your dog is experiencing separation anxiety, Please do not resolve to learned helplessness. That is not going to help your issue. It is not a matter of problem solving. It is not a matter of just kind of giving him a little challenge and seeing if the dog can figure it out. No, it is a matter of breaking down the dog's ego when you do this. So again, you need a process called desensitization, which you can check out in this video if you want or hit subscribe. I'm gonna be covering it in more detail in the next video. The next misconception that I see all the time is that a dog who pees when you leave is just doing it out of spite. Oh my gosh, this one frustrates me a little bit because I still hear this going around. Here's the thing, there is absolutely no data that indicates that a dog experiences spite. I'm not saying it can't be proven in the future, dogs are remarkable, I'm just saying that as of this recording, there's no data that says that dogs experience spite. So why your dog would be doing it just to get back at you doesn't really make sense. What makes more sense is that when a dog is in a panic attack, when a dog is experiencing this level of distress and this emotional disorder, what actually is happening is that the, the amygdala, or which is in charge of the fight, flight, or freeze response, is inciting all of the uh, resources as, and, and activating all of the survival mode. And so as a result of this, the resources are being sent to this system, and the systems like the digestion system or like the reproduction system, they are not getting as many resources as they really need. And so those systems start to become faulty as a result of it. So this is a physiological response. It is an automatic response that the dog has very little to no control over. And this is not just true for canines. This is true for all species who are going through this level of anxiety and this level of panic. The next misconception around dog separation anxiety is that if you just put the dog on an e-collar, that will get the dog to stop whining and solve all your problems. Here's the thing. It might solve your problem. Your problem is that the dog whines and is disrupting your neighbors. Your problem is that your dog won't stop barking, right? And so putting an e-collar on the dog might, operative word being might, stop the dog from doing those things. But an e-collar does absolutely nothing to treat your dog's emotional experience. An e-collar does absolutely nothing to improve your dog's well-being and improve your dog's comfort level being alone. 
all it does is minimize the reaction externally. But that doesn't actually solve your dog's problem. If you're looking to really get to the root of the problem and prevent it from happening again in the future, then you need to be treating the emotional disorder from within. And that does not mean punishment. That does not mean punishing the dog into silence. That means treating the dog with trust and compassion. The next misconception around dog separation anxiety is that separation anxiety is not treatable. There are a lot of trainers that will say that training separation anxiety is not possible, that fixing the problem is not possible. My friends, I have an entire program that defies this logic. I have an entire program, my recovering Grobo program, which absolutely works through separation anxiety. Here's the thing though, I won't sugarcoat that it's difficult, right? Just because it's possible doesn't mean it's easy. And I'm not gonna sit here and say that fixing separation anxiety in dogs is easy. In fact, if your dog is experiencing true separation anxiety and having these panic attacks, it can be very painful and arduous for you. <laughs> However, it is also the more sustainable solution because you are treating the dog's mental health. You are treating the dog from within out. And that is a much more long-term solution than quick fixes. So if you're interested in learning exactly how I treat dog separation anxiety and how I recover those dogs' mental health, do me a favor and watch this video next. And make sure you get your free Frequently Asked Questions for Separation Anxiety and Dogs guide in the description box below. Make sure you hit subscribe and I'll see you guys next time.